This also goes against what most people are predicting in the industry. A, a lot of very smart people as well, but I think they're wrong. The talk about AI taking our programming jobs is everywhere. There are articles being written, social media going crazy, and comments on seemingly every one of my YouTube videos. And when I made my video about ChatGPT, I had two comments there that really stuck out to me. One was that someone wished I had included my opinion about AI in that video, and the other was asking if AI will make programmers obsolete in five years. I even got a tweet about it too. Well, this video is to answer just that. Will programmers be obsolete in five years? And after learning, researching, and using many different AI tools over the last many months, a video about those tools coming soon, well, let's just say I have a lot of thoughts on the topic. What AI can do for programmers right now, how it's looking to progress in the near future, and will programmers be obsolete in the next five years? There's a lot to unpack here, but what I find most hilarious is how so many self-proclaimed experts have been so wrong. Today, sure, they're saying how AI is coming after your white collar and creative jobs, but not too long ago, all of these same people were saying how some experts like doctors and lawyers and accountants and programmers cannot be replaced by robots with artificial intelligence because there's just some things too tricky for robots to handle, like subjective judgment, creativity, and empathy. Surely only blue collar jobs are at risk, right? This is what they said, but <laughs> they changed their tune real quick over the past few years because these jobs are what AI is currently focused on, writing, design, finance, programming. That's obviously what we're gonna be honing in on today, programming. And to get an even better understanding and to be able to formulate a better uh, opinion about the future of technology, particularly AI, we always have to be educating ourselves. We always have to be learning. And that's why I'll be virtually attending NVIDIA Spring GTC 2023 this Monday to Thursday, March 20th to March 23rd, which by the way, is completely free. I mean, we are talking about you know, what AI is doing and the potential for it taking programming jobs, right? Well, this GTC is heavily focused on AI. Part of the name is literally the era of AI. And as you know, NVIDIA is one of the companies that is making incredible advancements in this space. So the content and the talks occurring in these sessions at Spring GTC 2023, you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else. Like the co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, Ilya Sutskever, and the founder and CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, having a fireside chat about AI today and vision of the future. This is one of the sessions I will absolutely be tuning into, especially to see if they talk about what we're talking about in today's video, how AI will affect programming or, or jobs in general. I'm curious to see if they have a similar opinion to mine. If they defer, maybe they have some arguments I didn't think of. The founder and CEO of DeepMind, Dennis Hassabis, talking about AI to accelerate scientific discovery. That's a gnarly one. Generative AI, 3D by AI, enterprise transformation with AI, and oh so much more. This GTC is gonna be sick. And not only that, but you may have noticed something here in the background, that's right. This is an NVIDIA RTX 4080. Look at that thing, no doubt an upgrade. It may even be an upgrade in my system and I have the Titan RTX water cooled. Anyway, this isn't mine, nor will it be going in my system. It's y'all's, well, it's one of y'all's to be exact. Myself, alongside NVIDIA, of course, are giving it away to one of y'all. And we're also giving away five NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute credits. So if you wanna learn how to build and deploy a production ready conversational AI or deep learning model, well, you'll be able to do that using your Deep Learning Institute credits. All you have to do is attend just a single GTC session. Just check out the link below and fill out a form, which will be linked below the other link to prove that you actually attended a session. Then we'll pick whoever gets this and send it on off to you as well as the DLI credits. NVIDIA Spring GTC 2023, March 20th to 23rd, that is this Monday to Thursday, the conference for the era of AI. Trust me, you don't wanna miss it. I'm gonna be attending a lot. And it'll be interesting to see what they think the future holds. But for us to formulate our own opinions on what we think the future holds with AI, well, 
again, we have to look at how technology has impacted and changed the past. The first jobs people think of are manufacturing jobs, like welding, painting, and fastening on the assembly line for the truck you drive. Basically, every factory job is being automated one way or another. Where you needed 10 people to do this job, now maybe you only need two. I mean, you really think there are individuals packing each box of your Cheez-Its for you? No, of course not. But here's the thing. This phenomenon, if you will, has been occurring for hundreds or I could even say thousands of years. Scribes, the people who meticulously and laboriously hand wrote books and other writings, they were replaced by the much more efficient printing press invented around the year 1436. And even earlier, when movable type printing first developed in the Far East sometime around 700 AD. Farming, the lifelong practice of humans. Look at how it's done today with tractors and machinery versus back then by hand tools and animals. Back then, a single person with a couple oxen or horses would be lucky to farm one acre a day. Now, with the help of a tractor and other machinery, a single person can do 100 acres a day. And this is in all aspects of farming, tilling, planting, spraying, now, harvesting, plowing, it's night and day. What about washers and launders? Now you just use your personal washer and dryer, go down to the local laundromat with a couple quarters. Weaver, knitters, textile workers, these Luddites is what they were called in 19th century England, used to destroy weaving machines as a protest against unfair labor practices due to automation. Stockbrokers, I don't call someone to put in a trade for me, I use software. Secretaries and typists replaced by apps. Cashiers replaced by kiosks. Telemarketers replaced by automated phone calls. Just trying to contact you about your car's extended warranty. And the infamous switchboard operators. I don't know why they're infamous, it just sounded good. Did you know back in the day, in order to get your phone call to the other person, a human had to manually do it? To connect calls, operators used switchboards to perform the tedious job of inserting phone plugs into the appropriate jacks. When you take a look at these jobs and how they've been replaced, it makes a whole lot more sense why white collar and creative jobs are next on the chopping block. Many of these jobs are simple, repetitive tasks performed in a single spot. Sounds a bit too familiar, doesn't it? These are some of the many jobs that were automated in the past. So let's hold on to that while we discuss what AI can do for programmers now, because we need all of this information to best predict the future. So what can AI do for programmers now? Well, there are a lot of tools that can help programmers, you know, do their job and the workflow that I'll discuss in depth in a future video, but the tools specific to writing code in the space include code completion tools, automated testing tools, and code refactoring tools. But the one type we have to keep a serious eye on are the code generation tools. We've seen these in the form of Bayou, or I believe it's called Deep Coder, or an OpenAI Codex, and other similar tools to Codex that other tech giants are building. OpenAI Codex, for those that don't know, is basically what's behind ChatGPT and the code generation aspect combined with uh, GPT 3.5. It's also what GitHub Copilot is built upon. These tools, these code generation tools take plain text and turn them into usable code. It's not perfect. There's still need for human intervention right now, but for how long? Those kinks will undoubtedly work themselves out in the near future. And it can do everything I mentioned before, code completion, obviously code generation, it can write tests for you, it can refactor the code, it can describe entire code bases to you. And overall, it's actually quite impressive what it can do for your entire programming workflow. Given that information, do I think programmers will be obsolete in the next five years? No, obsolete isn't the right word. Heavily reduced? Yeah, absolutely. And if not in the next five years, then definitely within the next 10. And you may find that answer surprising. It's actually different than my initial answer going into research for this video. I even wrote an entire script going over all the reasons why programmers will not become obsolete. This also goes against what most people are predicting in the industry. A lot of very smart people as well, but I think they're wrong, absolutely wrong. And 
Here's why. When people think about this question, they're thinking about all programmers. I'm not. I'm thinking about how tractors reduce the amount of farmers needed to do the job. They're thinking about cashiers being replaced by kiosks. I'm thinking about weavers, knitters, and textile workers being replaced by a fewer amount of machine setters, operators, and tenders. They're thinking of manufacturing jobs being replaced by robots. I'm thinking of junior developers being made obsolete by artificial intelligence. I mean, think about the actual workflow of a software engineering team, right? You come together and you create a two week sprint. You have these user stories that you break down into tasks. You're pulling other tasks and things from the backlog, writing a description for it, estimating how long each task will take, and you start your sprint. Each developer is assigned or chooses the tasks they are to complete and complete them over the next two weeks. And a piece right here is what I had overlooked when I thought that programming jobs would not be replaced by artificial intelligence. My argument was that senior developers wouldn't want to be bothered by the redundant and simple and mundane tasks that they assign to junior developers. I mean, that's one of the main reasons junior developers are there to do everything that senior dev don't want to do. AI would just make these junior devs more efficient. I mean, because after all, somebody has to tell the AI what to write and then review the code that it writes, you know, make sure it all works and then throw it into your reverse control workflow. And the senior devs, while they could do that, uh, they're just too busy for that. It's below their pay grade. However, this is the missing piece. In the sprint, the senior devs already have a task with a title and a description on what needs to be done. Whether it's a feature that needs to be implemented or a bug that needs to be fixed or maybe just code smells or snippets of code that need to be refactored. Instead of assigning that task to Billy, you could just in your issue uh, tracking software, project management software, assign the task to the AI. The AI will be connected to your entire workflow. You assign the task to the AI and it writes the code like that. It writes the tests like that. It tests it within the entire code base that it has access to. And then again, it's part of your entire workflow. It can push that code, creating a new feature branch for that code, and then submitting a pull request to the development branch for code review. The code is already needed to be reviewed by the senior dev or somebody else in the team, and it's already being written during the sprint. Those are the two main processes that the junior dev would need to do, but the AI can already do the other parts, and these aspects are already being done. So what is the need for the junior dev, other than like redundancy or something? The only missing piece here is what happens when a senior dev leaves or retires. So there's going to have to be something in place to account for that. Maybe there's going to be a rise in skill gap for developers, just like there has been throughout history and in many other industries and jobs. Or, and what I think will be more likely long term, is really that the job entire landscape will change. Instead of there being, you know, like senior developers, they're not going to be writing much code. They're going to be maybe called something more like a software app administrator, if they want to still have some sort of name to that. Overall, they're just going to be a little bit more involved in the code project manager. Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be a need for somebody in between the AI and the code and the end user, whoever needs the product. And that's what you are. It'll effectively be similar to how freelancers and even companies build websites using Wix or Squarespace or no code tools. There's going to be a need for somebody to do that because, you know, if I need that done, I don't I have a business to operate or I have this to do. I don't I'm not going to go in there and build it. I'm going to hire somebody to do it. So you're going to have to have an understanding of like the overall architecture and whatnot. And when I say the skill gap may be increased again, I think that's short term. I think long term. Here's the thing. You can understand the fundamentals and the principles and the overall architecture, again, you'll just be learning these high level things that mostly like senior devs and project managers need to focus on, whereas junior devs don't. But like when you need to go into a new job and understand the code base, the AI will just describe the entire project and the entire goal of the project in layman's terms, in plain English for you to understand and get caught up for the entire code base. And if you have any further questions about more specifics, you just ask the AI and it'll tell you just like, it can, it can do now, but it'll be even better over the next five years, especially over the next 10. So yeah, unlike most others, I do think over the next, let's say 10 years, 
we will be seeing a decline in programming jobs overall. And this doesn't mean that there's not gonna be any jobs available because people leave, those positions need to be filled. Uh, new companies are starting every day and they need to hire programmers or software app administrators, whatever they're gonna be called. But when it comes to programming, I do see AI helping anyone become a programmer, be a programmer, because now you don't have to understand all the nitty gritty details. Just like, you know, now it's a lot easier to code using a programming language than like assembly language, right? Python's much easier than that. And there's more access for many more people to learn programming because it's easier to learn than it was back then in theory. So the AI will be breaking down that barrier to entry for programmers. The job market on the other hand is what we would have to worry about because that can do basically anything that you and I can do, most likely. Those will be some interesting times. And oddly enough, kind of looking forward to it. What about you? Do you agree or disagree with what I laid out here today? You can make any counter argument. Here, here's the thing. I want as many of y'all to comment down below your opinions, not because of the BS YouTube algorithm. I don't even know if comments help the YouTube algorithm, but because I'm genuinely interested in this topic and what y'all have to think, uh, what y'all think about it. Because the more I've been doing research into this, as I've laid out here in today's video, the more my point of view, my the more it shifted from no programmers will always be needed to, you know what, maybe not so much. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It'll be an interesting discourse. Let's all keep it civil. Okay, keep it civil. And uh, until next time, y'all have a good one.